Today I'm going to give you seven practical tips that can actually help you and your photography. A cold front has come down over the UK and we've had this blast of cold northerly wind and it's brought with it a tiny little bit of snow. It is around about half past six. I've got 20 minutes until sunrise. There's no chance of that happening. This cloud is firmly in, but I'm hoping it might lift later in the day and give me a bit of light on this area. Oh, that wind is howling in. It's bitterly cold, but the sun is breaking through in parts. And I'm not sure if you can see, it's probably a bit overexposed on this camera, but the light is hitting the hills in the distance. I'll try and get a shot with this camera. Now, first things first, when you're out taking photographs, if you don't have access to your camera, you're gonna miss quite a few shots. And that's why I keep going on about this capture clip. I'm not sponsored by the company. I bought it myself and it is quite expensive for what it is, but they're fantastic for having your camera on hand, ready to go, and it's right there. So it reminds you that you're out taking photographs. So when you are out and about, you can actually just grab your camera, take your shot, put it back and carry on. You don't have to worry about getting your bag off, opening it up, getting your camera out, and almost missing that glimpse of light that might peek out from the clouds and then disappear again. This is why these capture clips or a camera strap is absolutely fantastic. Now I do go on about this capture clip as if it's the best thing since sliced bread. There are a few downsides to it though. One of them being that when it does get really cold, it gets quite stiff and the camera does stick in it a little bit. Another time is when you are actually changing lenses and you have to take your bag off, you have to take the camera off first because that rucksack strap may flap to one side and if your camera's on it, the camera could hit the ground. So it's just a few things to be aware of. The second tip I can give you is that it's okay to be bad when you first start photography. It's one thing that a lot of people forget. They see all these amazing photographs online, they take some pretty good photographs with a camera phone, and then they expect to be really good when you first buy a camera. And this is never really the case. You've got to learn that camera, you've got to learn how it works, you've got to learn how photography works as well. So. I'm giving you permission to be bad when you first start landscape photography. If you start with this mindset in taking those bad photographs, you're actually gonna learn a lot. And that's the thing, it's about learning the art of photography. And before you know it, you'll get one really good photograph. That's probably when you'll start to be hooked. Now I seem to keep doing this. Whenever I come out to a location, wherever I am, it seems to be really cloudy. And then either side, it's really nice sunshine and really nice light hitting the landscape. So I think I need to work on the locations that I choose. Although it's pretty fantastic today, even though my mouth is slowly stopping working because it is freezing. And again, I'm complaining about the weather. If you're not from the UK, you might not realize that Complaining about the weather is a British pastime. If it's raining, we'll complain about the rain. If it's sunny, we'll complain about that. If it's hot, we'll complain about that. And if it's cold, we'll complain about that as well. We do it well and we do it all the time. But it is fantastic to get out to a location like this though, so I can't complain too much. Now the next tip I can give you is to plan your shoots. Find locations find where they're really good for photography, especially when you're limited in time, and then go out and do those shoots. 
when I first started getting into landscape photography, I didn't do this. We just went to different locations and I got so many average or really bad shots. Sometimes when you do plan them, a little bit like today where I plan to come up for a sunrise, it didn't quite work out. But that's the thing with landscape photography. You do have to be really persistent and you do have to just keep coming back to those locations. But if you plan your shoot, you keep an eye on the weather forecast and when you get a day off, you go to that location, you're more than likely to get better shots than you would if you just rock up any time of the day. Now you may be thinking, well, that's okay for you, Mike. You're fit and healthy. I've got a dodgy knee or I've got a dodgy hip. But if that is the case, and I'm talking about my fitness and I'm out of breath already. But if that is the case, you can go to places that have access with cars. If you can get in a car, if you can get someone to drive you to a location, you can still shoot some fantastic landscapes. If this is the case, it's not a good enough excuse. Now, if you don't have access to a car, it is a little bit trickier. And the best thing to do then is just to start saving your money and plan a trip to a certain location. Now, when you're thinking about what mode to shoot in, a lot of the times you might think, well, if I shoot in manual mode, I'll have complete control over all of my settings. However, sometimes when you're out and about in manual mode, something might happen in front of you and the settings aren't quite right and you might miss it completely or get a blurry shot. When you're just wanting to grab shots here and there or you just want to enjoy photography, stick it in aperture priority mode you'll be able to get the shot quickly the camera will change the settings to suit and then you just use exposure compensation to kind of counter it if it looks too bright or if it looks too dark and the amount of keeper shots that you'll get will increase so shoot in aperture priority and don't worry too much about those settings oh there we go now when i'm shooting in aperture priority what I'll tend to do is just before I take the shot, if I'm using my viewfinder, I'll look down at the shutter speed. Or if I'm using the screen on the back, again, I'll just look at the shutter speed. Just to make sure that shutter speed hasn't dropped too low and I get a blurry shot. If you make a habit of this, you can really use aperture priority to your advantage. And it just makes photography fun. You get your camera out, you take the shot, and then you move on to the next location. When you first get a new lens, it's really exciting, but sometimes it can be quite daunting to kind of understand how that lens works. Now, the best way to get around this is to go out just with that one lens and nothing else. I've got the 28 to 200 from Tamron, and it's been sitting in my drawer for a while. I kind of regretted buying it after getting it, and it wasn't until I just went out with that one lens that I started seeing the benefit of it. If you know exactly how to use that bit of kit, when you're in a high pressured situation or you're chasing that light, you'll know exactly where to focus to get the best out of that lens. Now you probably can't see it here because it's overexposed on this camera. But if I knock this down a little bit, you can see there's this big grand landscape here. Now, if you come to a landscape like this, the temptation is to put a wide angle lens on and get it all in. You might get bits of the grass in the foreground that aren't that interesting. You might get the random tree poking in in the corner. These are all distractions in your frame. So what you wanna do is remove those distractions. You can do this by getting closer to your subject, or if it's a big landscape like this, just use a zoom. And if you've got a telephoto and a long telephoto, this is really good. Even this way, where we've got the escarpment, if I was to go super wide, it does actually look pretty cool. Now, if I zoom in, I've got the cloud base and then I've got the escarpment in front of it. Just makes for a more interesting shot. <laughs> so we're finally seeing some breaks in the clouds. I've got this rocky outcrop and I want the sun to catch that rocky outcrop. Hopefully I won't have to wait too long. So you can see how quickly the light came on this rocky outcrop and disappeared again. And this is why being aperture priority is really good. And like I said earlier, 
having one of these clips or having your camera on a strap out ready to go, it's imperative to have that because when you get these bits of light coming through, you can capture those in an instant. Ah, yes, finally got some light. Ah. Now, <laughs> how cool is this? It was so overcast and I thought I'd be in the clouds by now. It's all burnt off, lifted up, the sun's broke through and the clouds are really disappearing really quickly. I haven't got that golden hour glow of the morning, but I don't mind. Now I'm thinking I'm just gonna get like a panorama again. Now to do these stitched panos, keep your camera in manual mode, focus on the scene and then switch it to manual focus. So nothing really changes. That's what I do. Then I make sure there's enough of an overlap and they pretty much stitch. You don't need a pano head, you don't need a, a nodal head, you don't need anything like that. You could do them handheld, as long as that shutter speed's high enough for you not to get any blur when moving your hands. I'll get one now and I'll show you what I mean. Now, I pretty much can guarantee that that will stitch together. You might think that I'm pivoting and I'm getting displacement between this foreground and the background, but nowadays Lightroom and Photoshop is so good, they'll stitch it together anyway. Now you may get a few faults in it if your arms are way out and you're swinging the camera, but if you keep it close to your body and just pivot your body, you'll more than likely get a really good shot. summit. Now there's one compositional technique that I've been doing more and more and if you want to know about that click on this video next. In it I go into loads of details about it. I'll see you next time.